Now, I want to give you probably the most important key factor I'll share with you today, and that is the formula for working out what size system you need. By knowing this, it will be extremely hard for anyone to come back to you and tell you, tell you that you're wrong, because you'll know if they're fibbing or not, and this is very cool. There are four parts to the formula. Part one is the size of the system. By now you have a fairly good idea of what size system you need and it's likely quite a bit bigger than you initially thought. When you choose the size of the system, we're, we're checking two things. First, that your system will output enough average daily kilowatts to eliminate your current usage. And second, that it eliminates the money owing on your quarterly account. Let, let's say you need to eliminate 33 kilowatts a day after future proofing and a quarterly bill on average of $700 a quarter. Let's choose a size of uh, 7 kilowatts and let's just see where it takes us. Okay, 7 kilowatt system. First, take your chosen system and then multiply it by the number 5. Now this is the number of daylight hours your panels are actually on the roof generating energy for. It's an industry standard figure. It jumps in summer and drops in winter. But on the average, if you look back over the last 12 months, you should be able to say, yep, we got at least five daylight hours out of our panels, uh, and that's what they're operating for. You know, just a side note, these figures are actually based on the Clean Energy Council requirements found on their website for daylight hours in different states around the country. Now, these numbers are for South Australia. The actual daylight hours recommended by the Clean Energy Council is actually 4.2 hours a day um, per kilowatt, not 5. However, most places in South Australia get significantly higher daylight hours than what is recommended, and we're comfortable rounding up to 5 for our calculations. Anyway, let's go back to our calculation. 7 kilowatt solar system times 5 daylight hours is going to give us 35 average daily kilowatts. Does that cover our required output? Yes. I mean, we need 33 kilowatts a day, so that's fine. Third part of the calculation is your tariff rate. Now, the tariff rate is what you get for selling your energy back to the grid. The rebates is what you get from the government to help offset the upfront purchasing costs. That's the difference. Anyway, just think about it like this. Before you buy, the government rebate helps make the purchase cheaper. After you buy, the tariff rate is what you get per kilowatt for selling your solar energy back to the grid. Let's use a rate of 26 cents, um, although these figures can vary quite a bit depending on when you buy and, and who threw. The fourth part of the calculation is simple, which is your billing period, which for most of us is 90 days. So this is the calculation, 7 kilowatt solar system times 5 daylight hours times 26 cent tariff rate times 90 days, it's your billing cycle, equals $819. Does that cover our quarterly account of $700? Yes, it does. Now you may wonder why we have to check that the system covers both kilowatt output as well as the money. Here's why. In technical terms, all you have to do to eliminate your bill is produce more energy than what you're taking. In other words, if you're using 33 kilowatts a day and you're producing 35 kilowatts a day on the average, then technically you should have taken yourself off the system. No more bill. Make sense? Well, this is how the energy retailers do the calculation. They credit you during the day 26 cents for the energy that you sell back. But at night time when you use the majority of your power, they actually charge you maybe 35 cents or more. So there's a disconnect between the benefit your solar system produces and the amount you need to produce to eliminate your bill. And this is why we use this calculation to help us get rid of the bill. Now before we move on, some of you may be thinking that $100 a quarter above your quarterly bill is too much. I mean, what happens to that? It's a good question. For the most part, it just sits on your account and it insulates you against future price rises. Uh, future price rises, sorry. They don't send you out a check each year like they used to. Um, but most energy retailers would be happy to offset any surplus you have on your electricity bill off your gas account if you have both services with the same provider. In fact, as part of the application, before you talk with your coach, we actually ask for this information as well. If we can provide you with a solar system that will cover both your gas and electricity bills up front, I mean, you will be miles better off. Still, 
some of you may still be wondering if we could get away with a smaller system. Let's redo the calculation with a 6.5 kilowatt, just half a kilowatt small system and see where it takes us. Remember the formula, 6.5 kilowatt solar system times 5 daylight hours times 26 cents times 90 days, that will give us $760 a quarter. And it gives us 32.5 kilowatts a day. Remember, we needed 33 minimum. So you can see it's very close. We come over with the money produced, but under with the kilowatts. You can see even half a kilowatt makes a difference in the system. And this is why it's so important to get the right size system. In fact, from time to time when I put my coach's cap back on and I get on the phones with clients, I usually mark down $50 from the quarterly bill projections. So the 819 would become 769 and 760 would become 710. And I do this because of the fluctuation in the tariff rates and changes in how the energy providers charge us. And I'm just ultra conservative in this area. I always stick to this philosophy. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So for all of these reasons in this particular situation, I would have gone with the seven kilowatts over six and a half. I, I hope that makes sense. You can go over it in more detail on your coaching call.